Greetings, traveler. I am Sir Knox, the teller of tales. Would you like to hear one? This one is called Jealous Problem Player Tries to Steal Another Player's Girlfriend. Oh, that's not good. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already. Look down, and if you see that the subscribe button is not a, a color other than red, I guess that's what it would be, then please click it so it's no longer red. <laughs> I, um, anyways, okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> Hello, people of Reddit. I am here to tell you all of a problem player who almost derailed a campaign I am part of. Using a throwaway account as one of the people involved is among us, but isn't part of this subreddit. A few warnings before we get started. This is my first time posting, so I apologize in advance if this isn't formatted or told well. I would also like to give a fair warning right here that this is going to be a lengthy story. There are a lot of details that I thought were important to include, but some may disagree with what's relevant and what isn't. Also marked NSFW due to language and some other themes. Let's start with some brief context. This was a D&D campaign started not too long ago that a good friend of mine was DMing during our college semester. The campaign was on Roll20, and we were going to meet up over Discord to play. DM told me everyone that was going to be playing, and two of the members were people that I knew well already. They were mutual friends between us. They have a few relevant parts in the story, so let's call them Max and Jessica. The other three have most of the story revolve around them. They are Derek, his girlfriend Mary, and the beloved problem player Gooba. This was my first time hearing of Derek and Mary, but I have crossed paths with Gooba before. We were both art majors and had a lot of the same classes together. <laughs> I love the name Gooba, that's great. We usually worked on homework and projects when we could, but never really evolved beyond acquaintances. Gooba was not a very social person and was fairly awkward. She was also trans, male to female. And the last time we spoke was about two weeks ago when I rejected her asking me on a date. It was nothing against her, I just didn't think we connected at the same level she did. She didn't take it too well and kind of exploded on me. This was in person, so I don't remember what she said exactly, but the gist of it was she called me an anti-progressive and homophobic. Even though she knew I am a bisexual who was pretty open about my support for LGBTQ movements, she later texted me to apologize, but I never responded. These details will be relevant to the story. Interesting how you rejecting somebody automatically makes you a bigot. <laughs> you could just simply not be interested and just make you a bigot. People are allowed to have preferences, you know. A few hours before our session zero, we were all invited to DM's Discord group chat made for the campaign. Goober PM'd me soon after joining. Goober. Hey, OP. I just want to once again apologize for the way I treated you. It was very bad of me to act like that, and I'm just not good with rejection. Can you put it past us? Me? Sure thing, Goober. I understand. Okay, real quick. Something about me is I do have some serious anxiety issues, and I have a huge fear of confrontation. This is not an excuse for some of my choices later, but it's some insight into why I let some things happen or acted in a certain way. Thank you so much. I'm kind of nervous about D&D, to be honest. Is it your first time playing? No, I've played a lot of times, but it was with other another group of people that I do really well, or so I thought. They kicked me out for being trans. I'm nervous because of the new people I will meet here. Oh, wow, I'm really sorry to hear that. Diem is a nice guy, though. He wouldn't kick you out for something like that. He did seem nice. Yeah? How did you meet him? There was a D&D &D thing on campus, and we bumped into each other. He told me he was uh, DMing a campaign and invited me after I told him the situation I was in. Well, that's great. I think we'll have a lot of fun. We have a lot more small talk that isn't relevant to anything before DM announces Session Zero is starting. We all joined around the same time. Derek and Mary had their cameras on. I don't want to go into detail because it would be weird, but as a bisexual, I can say that Derek and Mary were quite attractive people. And as we will soon find out, Goober thought the same. DM. Hello, guys. Do we need to have cameras on? Uh, not if you don't want to. All right, good. Yep. Now, just an FYI, at Goober's request, 
I will be recording these sessions because she prefers to rewatch or listen to videos rather than have notes with the party. I don't like dealing with discombobulated information being thrown onto a document at once by about like five people. So just a note, I did have access and rewatched these sessions to ensure that this story is as accurate as possible. Does anyone have an issue with that or wish to not be a part of it? I won't be sharing anything with anyone outside the group. We all said we were fine with it and we get down to session zero. DM gets some introductions out of the way for the new three and explains the idea of Rule 20. He then helps us all get into his D&D Beyond campaign where he offers to make all character sheets. He has almost every book bought and you can assign characters to people in your campaign manually. So basically, he wanted us to have as much content to work with. We go around and he makes our sheets with the races, classes, spells if needed, and all that, and then sends them to us so we can make our backstory and appearances and whatnot. Here is the lineup of the whole party if anyone is curious. Me, a wood elf female ranger, Max, a tiefling male warlock, Jessica, a male human monk, Derek, a male warforged artificer, Mary, a female high elf wizard, and Gooba, a female high elf fighter. I will spare the backstories because they really have nothing to do with the context of this, so after that is done, everyone is given a chance to look over each other's character sheets and read backstories and such. Gooba PMs me again. Gil, look at Mary. She's a queen. She's also Derek's girlfriend. Yeah, I know. Wouldn't it be funny if her character got into a relationship with mine instead of Derek? Uh, no. Oh, come on. It would be a classic case of irony. <laughs> look, I can't tell if you're joking or not, but if you aren't, that is not okay. Sorry, yeah, it's a joke. I forgot I have a very rare sense of humor. Okay. I thought that was going to be the end of that, but I was wrong. Gooba had a plan, she speaks out after a few moments. I'm noticing that my character is the only trans one, but that's okay, I saw that coming. I also see that I'm the only one who listed their character's sexuality, and I think it would be cool if everyone else did too. This is where I made the biggest mistake, and partially caused this whole avalanche. I should have stopped her there and brought her message up to the DM. It was pretty clear where she was going with this. I didn't do anything at the time because I genuinely felt sorry for what happened to her in her last group and didn't want her to feel like we are going to kick her out too. On top of the issues I have mentioned above, this is on me. I am an idiot. I have a big portion of the blame on my shoulders. Anyway, the group didn't really see a problem, but Derek was iffy and spoke out. I'm not saying it's a bad idea or anything, but uh, why? Well, I just think it would be a good way of adding more depth to each other's character. <laughs> it also opens up suggestions to make the party more diverse. I mean, it would be really boring if we were all straight. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to decide for everyone, but I'm not going in depth with that because my character is a robot. So, he can have romantic or sexual feelings for people. Uh, theoretically, yeah, but I don't want that. I'm playing an artificial construct that gains sentience. Sexual or magic relationships are just, there's something he has an interest in. That's, there's, there's that asexual. Well, that doesn't count. How does that not count? Okay, hey, you two, let's, let's stop this. Everyone is free to make their character who they want. We don't need to suggest anything to anyone, got it? They both agree, and we finish section zero by setting Raw 20 up. We say our goodbyes, and I was still worried about Goober feeling accepted here, so I PM'd her to check in. Hey, so how did you think session zero went? Uh, it went all right. I'm a little bummed out with the party lineup. How so? Mary specified her character was straight. Now my character's gonna have to convert her. She honestly deserves better than Derek. I would treat her the way she deserves to be treated. Um, can you not make those jokes? Also, that makes Mary the only straight character, which makes our party extremely diverse. I mean, Max's character is gay and Jessica is bi. I think we have a good set. Garrick does not have an LGBTQ character. His character is asexual, so 
Yes, he does. His character is only ace as an excuse to hide as LGBTQ, but not have to be gay. He's probably a bigot at best. <laughs> what? That's a pretty big conclusion to jump to. He's a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, cis white guy. I may be wrong, sure, but it's a very, very strong chance he's a bigot. Oh, come on! You've got to be kidding me! Okay, look. <laughs> this is not fair. You told me earlier that you don't take rejection well. I think you may be overreacting to this. Because you feel like an idea of yours was rejected. Now, I can tell these things about people, but maybe you're right. I'm going to take some time to process this. Alright, talk to you later. Bye. I should have most definitely gone to DM about this at this rate, but I had hoped that this would blow over and she would move on. I was dead wrong, and yes, must state that this was a very stupid move on my end. So over the next couple of weeks, we have quite a few sessions. Most were fairly good without a lot of complications, and for brevity, too late, I will not include them. I will say that there were a few small moments where Derek and Goober clashed, but we'll only include summaries of the four major points that occurred. The first time was during character introductions when Goober in character flirted with Mary with the fact that they were both high elves. Mary wasn't sure how to respond and Derek asked politely for her to not do that again. Goober left the sessions early after that, pretty minor compared to the other three but still important. The second instance needs some context. Derek was playing the only lawful evil in a party full of good aligned characters. He was not afraid of playing an evil character and doing evil things as long as it wasn't disruptive. Being lawful evil, he was loyal to the party as they were made his allies by circumstance. He would go along with majority rule decisions, even if they were against his character's alignment or beliefs. This was supposed to be the start of his evil to good arc. When party members failed a check they were supposed to specialize in, or do a good deed or something along those lines, he would in character belittle the other party members. I would also like to add that he wasn't targeting anyone. He kept it equal throughout the party to the best of his ability, and to his credit, was often pretty creative with his insults. No one saw it as an issue. We all liked the change of pace and presence of a non-goody-goody bringing depth to moral dilemmas and such. Gooba, on the other hand, didn't seem thrilled whenever she was the target. However, she never said or did anything to express her dislike of it until this one time. Gooba bragged in character about having a high intelligence for a fighter. 14 intelligence at level 1, and stopped Derek from making an arcana check on a magically sealed door. Stand aside, you simple machine. As a high elf, I know my magic. We don't need you to do our thinking for us. Even as a warrior, my intelligence is leagues above that of more common soldiers. My apologies, Elf. By all means, determine the classification of magic surrounding this door. All right, Goober, roll Arcana. Two plus two for a four. Hmm, that's tough. Had to beat a five. Derek, your turn. Uh, 18 total. Okay, yeah, you deduce that there are basic warding spells surrounding the door, and with that roll, you dispel them too. Well, I shall say I'm impressed. It's not every day I meet an elf with the intelligence to match an ogre. <laughs> I swing at Derek with my rapier. 17 to hit. Uh, sorry, no, PvP, unless both players agree, Derek. Oh, uh, I'd rather not. Okay, no PvP then. Guba did not like this. She said goodnight to us all and left the session immediately. A DM reached out to her the next day and they both concluded that for the campaign's sake, Derek would not RP with her in that manner anymore. When this was brought to Derek, he mentioned that the insult was targeted at Guba's character and not at her, but apologized and agreed nonetheless. Now here is a huge problem that happened after. Gooba started trying to belittle Derek after this over almost anything she could. Derek called her out for being rather hypocritical, which caused her to scream no while banging on her table. DM ruled that there would be no more banter like this for anyone. 
The third instance was when we all reached level 4. Derek chose the Armorer as his subclass at level 3 and reached an intelligence of 18. If you're unfamiliar with the Armorer Artifice, I hate that word. They get Thunder Gauntlets that do 1d8 damage and use Intelligence Modifier for damage and to hit. On top of this, he had a dexterity of 14 with magic infusions on his starter scale mail and the shield he bought. This meant that his spell attacks and melee attacks had a plus 4 modifier and his AC was now 21. Gooba, on the other hand, chose to be a battle master. Not sure why. As an elf, she was building a dex based fighter, but instance 2 stuck with her and she focused her ability point increases on getting her intelligence to 16 rather than upgrading her dexterity. So, with her plus 1 leather armor and shield, she sat with 17 AC. Before this, she was the tank and a striker and was very proud whenever these feats came into play, but now Derek had overtaken both aspects that made her character special, not including the battle master, Dice, of course. She ended up leaving another session early after Derek saved the party from defeat. We had been in an extended fight against a pack of lizard folk. Derek was the last party member standing due to his AC and punched his way to victory. Guber made a very audible sigh and said she had some homework she forgot about before leaving. The fourth and last instance is what broke the camel's back. During the session, Derek informed us that one of his projects was due tonight and while he was done with his portion, he would be on call to help his group members finish theirs if needed. The party agrees to play with him regardless, and so we did. Luckily, right after reaching a town, Derek got a call and said he would return later. DM says that we are free to wander the town and do as we wish. Gooba PMs me again. Do you think it would be more romantic to walk through a town or the woods? Um, why are you asking? Uh, just wondering. I think it depends on the person. What do you think Mary would prefer? What? No. What? She's Derek's girlfriend. It's bad to do that. Not for long. Also, it isn't bad. It's my character getting with her character. Just like Derek's character supposedly insulted my character and not me. Plus, he isn't here. This is my time. That isn't the same. Please don't do this. These are recorded, remember? I didn't get a response and my anxiety was through the roof. Mary told DM that she was going to head to the town's library. Goober wasted no time saying that she would also like to go to the library. I approached Mary and asked if she would like to go on a walk together. Mary responds, Um, no thanks. I'd rather stay here. Just a short walk. I want to admire all the gorgeous things around here. <laughs> and that includes you. Um, thanks, but no thank you. Oh, come on. I know you're into men and all, but why don't you let me show you what a woman's love is like? <laughs> okay, I'm not comfortable with this. Please stop. Oh, come on. You might like it. Just give it a try. Goober, she said stop. Why? It's not real. It's my character and hers. Goober, I'm serious. This is... I'm sorry. Is there an issue? Derek had returned unannounced. Oh, thank you. Goober, are we going to have a problem? Silence. Are we? This is screwed up. Mary told you no. Among other obvious reasons, her saying no is enough for you to stop. Screw you. You just don't want our characters to get together because you won't be able to stand lesbians in the campaign, you homophobe. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You're making advances on my girlfriend and it's making her uncomfortable? How is me telling you to stop homophobic? I got news for you, little buddy. You don't know me. You have no right to label me like that for defending my girlfriend from you. I don't need to know you. I can just tell by looking at you, sweetie. That is not an adequate source to draw conclusions from. Oh, here we go with that fancy talk of yours. So you're transphobic as well? Trans people aren't smart enough to see things in people now. 
You think that you're so much better and smarter than everyone else just because you're a proper straight white man as an engineer. I mean, how can I deny your obvious superiority, my lord, with your super not generic and all actual evil robot guy? Who you tried so hard to make better than my character? Screw you, you garbage piece of crap person! <laughs> I'm sorry, I, c I couldn't keep the voice. <laughs> it hurts too much. <laughs> what the crap does that have to anything to do with anything? Where is this all coming from? Honestly, it doesn't matter. This tells me exactly the kind of person you are. You're just a freaking jealous, spoiled brat with a tiny infantile mind who can't stand not getting whatever the frick she wants. Screw you! How dare you say that to me? Screw you and screw your ugly, stupid girlfriend you're dating! Gilbert leaves the call and the group chat. We are left in silence. Hey, I'm really sorry about that, guys. No, no, don't apologize, bro. That crap was crazy. <laughs> she had no right to do any of that. Yeah, I know, but I really hate losing my temper like that. Um, if everyone is all right with it, I think we should just end here tonight. We all agree, and I PM Derek and Mary apologizing for not taking action sooner and showed the Discord messages between us. It was the least I could do at the moment. They both told me it was fine, and Mary told me that she also has confrontation issues and understood my position. I still feel guilty even to this day. I really should have spoken up from day one. On a brighter note, the campaign continued despite Goober leaving. DM adjusted a lot of things to accommodate the lack of a player, and we are still on this campaign to this day. Goober messaged me a few days after, apologizing again, and how she was just testing us to see if she could fully be herself. I sent a screenshot to the group chat, and we all had a laugh. I wanted to send an assertive message to her, but my confrontation anxiety came up again. I told the group, and Derek suggested, sending one while on the call with the party. We set up a time, and I sent her a message that stated I no longer wish to talk to her anymore, and that I did not want her to contact me. It really did help to have everyone there, even if it wasn't in person, and I'm very thankful for what they did. It took some courage to post this story here, and I am very thankful to anyone who reads this. Hopefully this can help some people understand the importance of bringing things up to the DM or the table, even if it means someone getting angry or confrontational with them. Well, I think you did the right thing. I mean, obviously you could have said something, but I don't think you're in that much of an issue for not speaking up sooner. Um... You tried to give them a chance. I mean, behind the scenes, you were very assertive. You told them, no, this isn't right, you need to stop, this and that. So, I think you did your part. You don't have to go and tell on everyone. You, you'd assume that after you communicated to them that it wasn't cool that they would stop. But they just got worse and they let the private DM antics turn into real gameplay, which turned into the issue that resulted in them essentially being banned and never coming back. So... It ended up working itself out. I'm sorry you had to go through all that and everyone had to experience that, but I think it worked out in the end and I wouldn't beat myself up too much like you're doing right now. Just, I don't think you really did anything wrong. Anyways, tell me what you think in the comments below. <laughs> sorry about the voices on this one. I was trying to have some fun, but towards that long rant at the end, I just lost it and my voice was just... <laughs> I let it go. Ah. Anyways, um... Yes, that concludes our tales for today. I guess one tale is all it is. That was a long one, but it was entertaining. Anyways, if you'd like to hear another, come back and I shall tell you one.